Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. Hey, and um, we missed you all yesterday on May the 4th. Be with you. Um, yeah, we were busy yesterday, so I did not do a blog. We ended up having a super busy day, a lot of work. It's really um, livening up here a little bit just since they opened up a couple more things here in Vegas, so that's that's good. But this whole virus shenanigans, man, you got, you got, what's his name, Don Lemon or something, saying, on CNN, saying, oh, all this is, virus is going to be worse and worse, all these people are going to die, and then the um, White House saying, no, that's completely false, so this is a weird time that we got, like, the government disagreeing with the news now. Um, because as we're finding out, you guys, this was not a deadly virus. Um, very few people are dying, and most of those numbers have been exaggerated. And there, uh, the CDC, the uh, Center for Disease Control, found out that the numbers were way less than the regular flu virus, even, of the number of deaths. And that, um... A lot of the numbers, they were already accounting for people that had pneumonia that were going to die. And then they were counting just if they got the coronavirus. It'd be like if you were like on your deathbed and then you got the coronavirus. And then they count that as a corona death. You're like, yeah, they did get the virus and die. But they were going to die today anyways. I mean, they're counting all of those. And that's, it's just, they're blown all out of proportion. And here's one of the big reasons is because they gave such incentive now to hospitals to have um, coronavirus patients because they get extra funding. And you say, oh, a hospital wouldn't lie about that. Are you kidding me? If you're a hospital and you don't have a lot of money, like let's say you know, you've been needing it, for the government, the government says, hey, if you have coronavirus cases, we'll give you tons of funding. I think a lot of hospitals would fudge those numbers a bit. And they would write it off as saying, well, we're doing it for the better good because we want to help people in the future by having more supplies and having the funding that we haven't been able to have and have the staff. So they would even excuse that and they'd say it was for the you know better will of the people because we need that you know you could see how they could excuse that so even if they said it was for the better because they'd be like well why would we not want the free funding from the government that would help our hospitals and here's the other thing you guys there's a lot of greedy doctors out there people have this mentality that just because someone's a doctor that that makes them a good person there are a lot of doctors that are great people don't get me wrong and I'm very thankful for some of the doctors that we have and the, the well, research that they've do done but, but do most black doctors go into it for what, what purpose? Uh, love they the go science? into it because they want uh, people to respect them and they want the money that's the thing they want the title and the money more than anything else that's what most doctors go into They're usually kind of like insecure they're insecure and they want and they probably grew up in a lot of times their family was already in the medical or lawyer field usually they're often lawyers and doctors and they uh, go into that because, and that's it's good money. because it's good money and it's what their family is but not not, because not necessarily because they love people or love what they do I've never met a doctor that actually loves and, people and um, you know a lot of doctors that's why people are like oh he's so rude and you know because a lot of doctors don't have the best social skills because they spent most of their time just studying and stuff and not really interacting with people so they're not even that social with people it's weird they're very like that's why you only see your doctor for a couple minutes and then your nurse is generally a lot more personable than the doctor a lot of times doctors are kind of dicks in a sense and then you say oh what if it's a female female doctors aren't much nicer it's weird it's almost like they're meaner I've had meaner female doctors. It's weird. They get really intense when they're doctors. How long did you work for doctors for? Okay, um, I worked, so I opened a knee injection clinic with these two doctors in um, Portland, Oregon. It was uh, at, it was called Reflex. I think it's still open. I don't know. I haven't looked into it in a while. But um, I was their only employee. They hired me to help them open it. And so I did everything. I did all of the billing and all of the interaction with the um, patients and everything. And I ordered all the supplies. I got the whole place set up. Um, I had to, um, you know, uh, 
coordinate with everyone to get all of the things to come to the office. You know, I ordered everything that we needed for a clinic. And um, I worked there for about a year, but I um, did a year of setup and then a year of at the clinic. So about two years with the doctors. Um, but they were both ER doctors, and then they did this clinic as a second job. And um, both of them made um, $500,000 a year as ER doctors. Looking I don't know if you guys know. Looking good as always from 420. Huh? Looking good as always. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, they were both making $500,000 a year as ER doctors. And then they were just doing this clinic just for fun, like with their extra funds. They both had like black um, cards, which, you know, or like unlimited, you know, they could, and they just, oh, just put it on my card, put it on my card, you know, for everything. Um, you can just charge anything to those cards. It's insane. I'd never seen that because I don't, I didn't know anyone with money in b before, you know, where you could just charge any amount to a credit card. I was like, geez Louise, they're putting like, you know, $20,000 charges on there. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, and, and so, I was really shocked to see like how much doctors made. Really, I was like, wow! And and for um, how much little? They and did. for how little they did? I mean, yeah, they. Well, geez. the scam is the scam. I mean, the, uh, and here's the thing. Okay. What's the scam? Well, and um, so my dad um and my grandparents were all in the medical field. They were not doctors, but they work at the hospitals. My dad's an X-ray tech, and my grandparents were um both my grandmas were nurses. So um and my they retired as nurses, and my dad is still an X-ray tech. He's been doing it for like thirty years now or something. So I have a I spent a lot of time in the hospitals growing up. I always was going to the hospital with my dad. We'd go visit him all the time we'd go there see him all the time um and even i spent um he my dad worked out on catalina island in la at the hospital there and he was the only x-ray tech and we'd go out for the summer and i'd spend all summer on the island with him and he would be the only one and so i'd help out in the hospital and everything because they basically i was there like all, like we lived at the hospital. That's what you I do because he's the only X-ray tech when you go out on Catalina. I don't, I don't know if you guys know about Catalina Island. It's right off of out of Long Beach near LA, but it's this little island. It's owned by the guy that owns Wrigley Gum, and most of the island is um, you can't go on unless you get like special permits because it's um, what do they call that? Where it's, uh, they made it like um, the the kind of property that you can't destroy it, you know, where it's a... Uh, Preserved. Yeah, whatever. So, but the one square mile is where the town is on Catalina. And that's where all the cruise ships come in. It's only one square mile. So that's where my dad worked. And um, he was the only x-ray tech at the hospital. And so um, I helped out a lot. So I have a lot of experience in being in hospitals and stuff. And then, like I said, I worked for those doctors. But... Um, I was, I'm really stunned always to see the scams with the insurance companies, and I did the billing for those doctors, and it's such a, it's such a scam. And then I've also had the bills myself, so I went to the doctor without insurance, and I got a $4,000 bill from the hospital, and then an additional $1,200 bill just from the doctor coming in for five minutes. I couldn't believe it. I was like, whoa, they get paid an additional thousand dollars just for that five seconds they came in my room i didn't even remember like seeing the doctor it was so fast and then um i got a sixteen thousand um, dollar um i rode an ambulance sixteen thousand dollars to ride in the ambulance they sent me that bill in the mail i was like luckily um that time I had health insurance because <laughs> uh, that that time I actually got in that car accident and I had health insurance the one time luckily because if I I'd still be paying on that bill, but the four thousand dollars I had to pay, um, and there's just so much scamming where you know when I did the billing it's like they. Um, it's just this thing where they overcharge and then they, you know, get X amount. But it's just this scam of, like, we charge way more than what we're really going to get from the insurance companies. But then so when you don't have insurance, you're getting charged this exuberant amount that the insurance company doesn't even pay. But, like, you as a private individual. So it's such a scam, like, and then they charge you so much for insurance, but it's, like, it's just this weird little game they play, and it's it's 
it doesn't need to be that way, you guys. And they, you know, they really could do so many improvements on the healthcare system. They, you know, of actually giving us, you know, when we went to Panama, it was $5 to go to see a doctor. Five dollars, whether you were a citizen or not. We were not even citizens, and it cost us five dollars for anything when we went to see a doctor. And then they would give you a prescription, and then you'd go, and it would the medicine was so much cheaper too for whatever you got. You know, it'd be like more like twenty dollars for something instead of hundreds of dollars. And this was like no copay, nothing like that. This was the amount, no insurance. We went as Americans with no insurance, not citizens, and it cost us five dollars for medical treatment. And we could do that here in the U.S. And we don't. We instead do these ridiculous things, all these scams, everyone overcharges, and then, uh, you know, the insurance doesn't even pay the full amount. But if you, uh, you're paying the, uh, this huge amount to your insurance, and then if you didn't have the insurance, you would pay this huge amount, but your insurance never even would pay that amount. So it's like this ridiculous scam they have going on of, um, like, you're paying the this fund that doesn't really pay, you know what I mean? But it's like, oh, but if you don't have that little card in a sense then we're going to charge you this exuberant amount that no one else pays yeah as a private individual if you ever get health care you're going to pay way more than insurance would ever pay for the same thing if you were paying your insurance they scam the individual which makes no sense to me i think if anything the individual should be getting the discounts when you go in and if you don't have insurance they shouldn't punish you they're punishing you because you don't have insurance that's ridiculous. The government should have a place that you can go, just like in Panama. When you live in Panama, for $5, you can go get medical care. And you're telling me Panama has more money than the U.S.? How come they can provide that? Because Americans are greedy as fuck. The doctor's here. Everyone here, the government, the doctors, all of you even, most of you guys are just as greedy as them. You just don't have as much money. You don't have the means to be as greedy, so you think you're not, but you would if you could. You know what I mean? Like, you you can show your level of greed when small areas, and then the universe knows you're not someone that could handle the big amounts. And so that's why you never got it, because you'd be even worse than the Donald Trump, some of you all. You all would be judging the Donald Trump. Donald Trump's and the this and that and this one and the other, but man, the universe gave you five dollars and um, told you to share it. You sure wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like that's the thing. People think, oh, if I had millions, I'd be so generous. Well, really, right now, when you have five dollars, and if they said, you know, you need to share it right now because these other people don't have anything, most people, oh, I ain't gonna give it my five dollars, my five dollars. So that's where you show your greed is when you have nothing. Are you willing to give up something when you have nothing? And you know what? As Jedi, we do all the freaking time. We've had it where we had twenty dollars, and a homeless person came up to us, and we were like. You know what? Fuck it. We gave him our $20, and that's all we had. You know, that was it. And we don't have savings or credit cards. That's like when we are down to $20, that is what we have. That is like where I've turned in the pennies. We don't have anything else. The only next option we can do is start selling the things we own. And the way you sell quickly is by pawning, which you get scammed. So it's not you lose like a ton of money if you have to sell quickly. You got to take the pawn shop and they give you like a third of whatever your value of your thing is. You know what I mean? So you don't want to get to that level. That's our only option when we are down to zero. You know, we have no credit cards. We have no savings. People think, oh, I don't have any money. And you're like sitting on all this money and I have all this money in savings. I hate when people say they don't have money when they have savings because you have money. Don't ever say you don't have money if you have savings. It's a lie and you are being greedy because you, you might not want to buy something, but to say you don't have money, I hate when I hear someone say, oh, I don't have money. Really? Because unless you have pretty much proved like with us that you don't have it or you're homeless or something, then you have money. You're just being greedy and don't want to, you know, like, especially if it's to help, like when they're like, oh, I don't have money to help that person or, oh, why would I help a homeless person? They, you know, I don't have money. They need to work. 
well, you know what? You're supposed to help them because you were told to help them at that moment. See, here's the thing. Whenever you're told to do something by your feelings, you should do it. Now, I don't know why, but you should have. Now, if you talk yourself out of it, like, I ain't gonna give them a dollar. They'll just go buy beer. Fuck you. Let them buy beer, you fucking greedy asshole. Who gives a shit what they spend their $5 on or their dollar, God forsake? Oh, I might buy beer with the dollar I give them. Oh, my God, you fucking assholes. You know what I mean? I can't believe when people say that. I'm like, oh, jeez. Hold on to your dollars. Good Speaking Lord. Of error, happy Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, happy Cinco de Mayo. This is a weird Cinco de Mayo for us. Yeah, this is very strange. Texas are checking in. It's very strange. I'm wearing this hat because I tried to be a festive. Kind of what? Festive. Sorry. Yeah, you look like festive. I think you look like <coughs> That's kind of... Okay, when I do a bong, and then for about an hour afterwards, it when I hot, laugh... We'll say. <laughs> okay, when I do a bong hit for about an hour afterwards, when I laugh, I and when I... um, It sounds terrible. <laughs> I start coughing. Trevor's like, you sound like a smoker when you... Like, after yeah, the, I do think it's funny. It's like, okay, so get this, you guys. This hat is a funny story. So I was... I. <laughs> I used to be really bad at ordering things online. Like, I would always just get it wrong. <laughs> it just never failed. I've gotten so much better. But this one is one of those things that <laughs> somehow I thought it was a regular visor. Like, I thought, I saw the photo with the hair, but I thought they just <laughs> were doing that for the photo. I thought it was a regular visor, and they just put, like, silly hair for the photo. So I was very disappointed when this ridiculous visor arrived. I thought, oh, that has the hair in it? Oh, no, I didn't want that. I didn't want that. <laughs> Who would wear something so ridiculous as this? I thought it was a visor. You know what I mean? Like, none of this stuff here. Anyways, that's my visor. But anyway, then now today it's festive enough, so there you go. But, yeah, yesterday was... Um, uh, May the fourth be with you. And I missed doing a blog. I was insanely busy, you guys. It was, it was, thank you, Satan. Because we were down to the, someone's going off on my watch here, what does it say? Um, we were down to the last pennies. I was like, oh man, I was, I was about to have to go sell something. And then, um, luckily we got business. Um, it was really like a busy day. Like I had to turn down business. It was so busy yesterday. I couldn't believe it, which is always, it's always that way when it rains, it pours. It's like, you know, like I'll be like no business forever. And then it all comes at the same time. (laughs) Dang it. But it was a really good day, so um, I did not have time to get on here. And then I also um, had to run errands, and we were, we were just running around all day. So it was so good to be back busy. I'm hoping it stays a little bit busier because some things are starting to open. So I took the bus to Walmart yesterday, and it was actually, like, busy for the first time. Like, not the bus. Not Walmart's been busy all along. But the bus, where normally when I've been on the bus, it'd been, like, literally just me and maybe one other person. Now it was where they put all these COVID signs so you can only sit in certain spots. But now it was, like, to where almost people were going to have to sit on the spots you weren't supposed to because it was getting so full. But, um, so... Here's the deal. There's, like, this real conflict going on where we have half of, um, like, the world saying this is not a deadly virus. The numbers are coming out. They're saying it's, like, 0.1% chance that you can even die from this thing. So, like, 99.9% chance you won't die, that you'll recover, which is not a deadly virus, you guys. Okay, every virus, people die. So yes, every virus could be classified as a deadly virus. But to really consider it to be a deadly virus, you would assume that more people are dying than recovering. That's what the assumption would be if you thought a deadly virus. I'd be like, wow, if you get it, there's a good chance you're going to die. That's what they were implying was going to be this COVID. And that's not what it is. In fact, it's 99.9% chance you will recover if you get this virus. So that was no reason to shut down all of society. And now people are starting to realize that. And the big uh, issue is the government doesn't know what to do now because they convinced everyone it was a deadly virus and it's not. So now they're trying to just control this 
catastrophe they created. And once everyone realizes what just happened, people are going to be infuriated. So there is a a place here called Ricardo's. It was a little Mexican restaurant that's been open for 40 years here, I think. 30 or 40. I think it was 40. Here in Vegas. Uh, We drove by it all the time. It was on Flamingo and uh, Durango. No, Flamingo and Decatur. Um, uh, If anyone's around here, you know where that is. But uh, the guy just had to close. Couldn't couldn't afford. He said 40 years, and this shut him down. And he said that um, the takeout was a joke. I mean, he was down from, he had like 26 or something employees. He could only uh, pay like four for the takeout because it's just, you know, you don't. There's not enough money coming in and stuff. So businesses are starting to close like crazy here in Vegas. And I heard that most of the casinos will not open ever unless someone buys them. So they um, MGM is probably not going to open Luxor or Excalibur again. Um, and um, some of the other ones uh, they're already talking about. So like some of the ones that are crappier, maybe they may never open at some of these, um, like the, um, the, oh, and Palms just closed for good. Palms Casino, I don't know if you guys hear this, is closed for good. Now, I have a story about Palms Casino, if you guys want to hear. So here's a real ringer. So Palms Casino, as uh, you all know, uh, it was very popular for a long time. Um, it was, you know, they put it on a lot of the, the, the real world. They went there often. It was, you know, the, it was the hangout. And it was the cool place. This was in the early 2000s. And then I don't know what happened. People just stopped going there. And it just kind of died. And when we got here, it was not a popular place to go anymore. Um, and it was kind of divey. And um, so the guy that was owning it, I forget his name, uh, he was in the hole four hundred million dollars when he sold it. That's why he he just it was just not making enough money. They even had just put in a new Hooters um, restaurant, which closed right away. It did not work out. They made this huge Hooters restaurant. They we're gonna have a pool and stuff. It didn't work. So Stations Casinos, which is they do Palace Station, Texas Station, uh, Red Rock, um, uh, Green Valley Resort, um, and then like the Cup of Sunset Station. Well, the ones that say Oh Wild West, a bunch of those ones. Um, they bought Palms a couple years ago. Now I think it's been and. They uh, were going to just try to revamp it. They did this huge remodel. They got this huge new um, screen, the biggest screen that they have here. Um, what do they call those LED screens? Um, it was just, it's massive. And then they were going to open this huge new club called Chaos. And now I believe they spent, uh, I believe it was close to a billion yeah, it was like seven hundred. Yeah, about a billion. Close to a billion. It was like seven hundred million or something yeah, like that. Million, Somewhere million. close to a billion to build this club, and it was called Chaos, and it was just going to be the thing, you know. And this is literally, you guys, just not that long ago. Now, this is only a couple months back that it was the opening. Now, I want to say six months to a year, maybe now not that long ago there was the opening of this club and they were going to have marshmallow they were going to have cascade they were going to have skrillex that were their like um you know they're going to be their headline so so they so they i promised all these like 60 million dollar contracts to these guys to these djs right this is going to be huge um so then they open up and they start it's just not as popular okay and then they get cardi b and that's going to be their big show. All right, Cardi B is going to play at Chaos, and it was a big deal. And this was in, um, I want to say, Hall- Halloween maybe? I can't remember. But anyways, it, it was not that long ago, you guys. And Cardi B uh, didn't show up, really. She was late for hours to the show and then she finally showed up and played for like 10 or 15 minutes and then left so people were infuriated so that was already not good publicity going on people were like i paid to go to this chaos show and cardi b's four hours late and blah 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 so already but guess what else was going on during this cardi b show so their general manager 
His name is um, John, Gray. John Gray. I always want to call him Alex Gray, who's a porn star. <laughs> that's why I always, I'm like, what's the name? I even called him that yesterday. The driver said, no, that's the porn star. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Gray. John Gray was the general manager who was um, embezzling a ton of money during this whole opening of this club okay so he got fired you guys they found out and he's like under investigation for embezzlement but okay so he was already embezzling like money when during this the remodel and the opening you know easy to you know slip money here and there in your own pockets while they're building and not noticing that's why everything was costing so much and then he was also shortening shorting the djs so so they ended up not being able, okay, so I'll get to that in a second, but they ended up not being able to, you know, continue with the DJ's contracts, so they have DJs suing them now and everything, so it's a mess, but anyways, so John Gray, during this Cardi B show, decides he's going to get extra money for himself, even during the shows now, so he decides to turn away people that had tickets to the show and he instead lets anyone come at the door and give him money to then get us into the show and then people with tickets he said oh you can refund your money so the guy's screwing over the business he works for they're getting no money at the door because he's putting it in his pocket along with his other embezzlement that he's doing uh, with all the other stuff so this poor club was tanked before it could even start. So, of course, it only lasted, I think it was two months. Um, but, get this, so they promised all these DJs all this money, you know, like they're in contract with it. So we got Cascade is suing them, Skrillex is suing, Station Casinos, they were able to pay, they paid $30 million to uh, Marshmallow was the only one they paid, but the, all the rest of them, they promised them all these contracts. So we got all these DJs now suing Station Casinos. They got their general manager, they fired him, but he's under investigation for embezzlement and fraud and all this stuff. And then now, Palms after this close completely done but they were done even before this because of that whole chaos <laughs> they named the club chaos talk about irony right the whole thing was a chaos it was from day one because they got their general manager was sabotaging them from the inside the entire time he had no intention obviously of letting that club succeed if you were stealing right at the door I mean it, a club is not going to succeed if you are taking the money from the patrons putting it in your own pocket instead of it going to the club so they weren't even getting money from the door because he was doing that for every show can you believe that so, so Jedi Rich wrote an article about this guy a couple months back because when we had found out first about this, he and he wrote saying what a, this guy, what a fraud he is, John Gray. This guy wrote us directly and he was so aggressive and wanted to fight Jedi Rich. He said, he was like, he was insane. He's like, you know, we're going to handle this man to man. And I was like, fine. And then, of course, he backed down. But he was so mad because he is in so much trouble. So he, he found, we didn't even know the guy. We never knew he would even find our website. We write something about him. He found it. He contacted us. You take that. He was a call, all, calling Jedi Rich all kinds of names. The guy is a fraud. And those are, we have so many people like that here in Vegas. And so one good thing about this shutdown is I think it's going to shake out some of the riffraff here and some of the scams of the John Grays of the world. And the, um, what's his name? Jim. Jim. What's that? Jim guy? What's his name again, Jerry Rich? Huh? What's Steve Cecilic's little butt friend's name? Which one? His little buddy, Jim. Jim. Um, Jim Murin. Jim Murin. Yeah, Jim Murin, another fraud. So Jim Murin was the CEO of um, MGM, M, M Life. MGM is uh, like 12 properties, 11 or 12 properties. It's M Life. It's, you know, it's, it's a bunch of them. It's not just MGM. So he was the CEO of all of that. And right before all of this, he decides to... Um, uh, resign and cash out all of his stocks for MGM 
very weird for someone to do that owns so many stocks of something that was doing very well until the shutdown, right? So very interesting that he would cash out, right? Okay. So this all happened a couple months ago. Then Steve Sisolak hires him. Governor Sisolak is his right-hand man. And the whole, and they shut down all the casinos for a deadly virus that they allow construction to continue the entire time. And then now, when the shares are worth nothing, Jim Mirren is buying them all back. So you tell me he did not know that they were going to do this? They knew they were going to do this, you guys. This is a political stunt, and he's going to be investigated. There is not this thing of coincidence when it comes to stocks or just pure luck. They look into that stuff. It don't matter even if you had luck. If it, it appears that it was just a little too lucky, it can be considered illegal. So this would seem just a little too lucky do you realize what that means is he sold his stock when it was at the highest all of his stocks then they tanked the stocks for him to buy it at the cheapest that is highly illegal do you guys watch the show billions i love that show I'll watch it when we get a chance. I was watching it last night. It gets me all fired up. Because if you don't believe that these things occur, you need to watch that show. And I get it is a fictionary show. But the thing is, it is showing things that really occur. It's showing that this is what happens. The corruption that occurs in the stock market and in the politics and in the government watch that show and you will be blown away at just the things that the politicians do and it's all vendettas and like personal and this is definitely personal against trump the democrats are making it personal against trump they do not like him they want him out of office and first they tried to impeach him i guess he did get impeached but not removed or whatever but he's still there. So now they jumped on a virus. This is what happened. China was infuriated that Trump did a 25% tax on them. So they thought, you know what? This is 2020. We don't have to fight with bombs anymore. We have social media. All you got to do is scare people. All we have to do is take the regular flu virus and put on a bunch of gas masks and th blow out the numbers and ask and make everyone scared like there was this huge epidemic in China. Which turns out there wasn't. Turns out they blew out the numbers. They were blown out of proportion and it turns out they were lying about the deadliness of the virus. There was a virus, yes. A regular flu virus, yes. Not a deadly one. Not one that we needed to quarantine ourselves. So that happens. So then it spreads like wildfire across social media. And now the Dems are saying Trump's not doing anything because Trump's saying it's a hoax. Remember in the beginning? This is in January. He's saying it's a hoax, saying it's a hoax. And then they get all on the Dems are just going nuts on Trump, saying he ain't not doing enough, not doing enough, not doing enough. Not. That is when I am saying that they jumped on the opportunity. They knew it wasn't deadly at that point because guess what? Governor Sisolak, during the entire time, allowed construction to continue, along with other governors allowing things like that in their states to continue, which, if it was a deadly virus, they would have contaminated us all by allowing all those workers, because 16 workers that we know of tested positive at the Raider Stadium, five that we know of at Resort World. That's just what, what we know of, and the numbers are higher than that, because you know it's always higher than the numbers that come out when it comes to things like that because most of those things get swept under the rug you know they don't want more you know what I mean so the number is going to be lower than what it probably is because every time they say oh no 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 it's not that many you know, they freak out about the numbers so you know it's probably higher whenever someone freaks out about a number then you know they're probably fudging their numbers 
Because who cares if it's just, you know, I mean, they're, oh, no, no, no. And that's what happened with the Raiders team. They're arguing over whether it was, you know, when the beginning, whether it was four or five, now it's 16. Oh, ain't not, ain't not five. It's only four. Ain't not five. You get your numbers right. Ain't not five. Okay, well, now it's 16, so <laughs> get over it. So, and people go, oh, then that means it's a deadly virus and it's spreading like wildfire. No, it's a virus that spreads like regular viruses and then the people are recovering. So it's not like 16 people died from the Raiders Stadium. 16 people got it and recovered. See, this is where the people are getting all warped up because they're hearing, oh, all these people are getting the virus. Yes, and they're recovering. You're Odds of recovering are 99.9. Your odds of dying are 0.1. I'm going to take the odds that we could have kept the world going and uh, we'll take that 0.1. But instead we shut down everything for 0.1. And the Dems did it because once they saw... See, I don't think they started. I think it originated in China, the hoax. There was a virus, yes, as there is every year, a regular flu virus that kills around 50,000 in the U.S. and about 650,000 worldwide. Yes, that is what came through. If anything, this one was less severe. So that is what China uh, had, and then they said, it's deadly. And they put on, if you guys had seen the things they put on, you know, like the true gas masks and garb like that, I said you would really have to do if they really wanted to quarantine. They were doing that, which looked scary, like, oh gosh, what is this? Everyone got scared. Spread like wildfire on social media. The only reason why this is so big this year is because of social media. If it hadn't been for social media, none of this would have happened. So then the Dems saw that it was spreading like wildfire. Perfect opportunity since Trump is not acting, because everyone was saying Trump looks bad. Perfect opportunity to jump on it, make Trump look worse. And I'm not for Trump or against Trump. I don't vote. I'm just telling you the facts of what happened right now. And it was the perfect opportunity because now all they talk about is everything about Trump when, you know, of like what he did wrong or, you know, what uh, it's like, oh, you know, the president, this president, that. It's like we should be worrying about people dying, right? I shouldn't be hearing about what, what actions Trump took. That shouldn't even be the discussion if it was really so deadly. But when you know that they're wanting to focus on that more than anything, then you know then they're not truly caring about the people. Because right now, they should not even be talking anything political. It should be like, hey, man, we got to take care of everyone. Let's just, you know, bunker down. Who, who cares about the elections? Who cares? You know, it should, but no, of course that's not happening. They're still using the opportunity. So I know it's political. And the reason why I know it's political is because of the businesses that they allow to stay open, like construction. If... Governor Sislek believed from the beginning this was a deadly virus, then he risked the lives of every construction worker and everyone in Nevada because if he allowed that and they spread it all around like they did, then all of us would have been contaminated if it was truly deadly. So he did not do anything by shutting down the casinos if he allowed construction, if it was really deadly. So I knew right away, just right away, when he said construction is allowed, I go, oh, then he obviously doesn't view this as a very deadly virus. And every one of you should have felt the same way, but instead you didn't. And everyone called him mean, crazy. And they say, oh, no, no, no. Governor Sislak is looking out for our best interests and every other. Uh, if you notice, it's mainly the Democratic governors that are making the most extreme measures against their states. Now, I don't care which way you all all vote. I don't think you should vote at all, to be honest. It would be my personal vote. That would be my personal vote. But you need to wake up to what's going on in that the government is playing with us. Whether you're a Democratic or Republican or whether you like Trump or you like these other Democrats. I don't even know who's... Biden isn't. I don't even know who's up anymore. Um... I know Bernie Sanders, I think he's out of the running. I don't even know. I did not fall in that crap. That's something I normally don't follow politics at all. But during this, it's made me be super political because they are being political. <laughs> and I didn't want Vegas shut down. 
And if Vegas had not been shut down, I would not be on here talking about politics. But they shut down Vegas for political reason. So now I have to get on here and talk politics, which is not my favorite thing to talk about. I'm telling you why, I don't like politics. That's why I don't vote, never have, and I never will unless they change the system. Um, and I was even in the military and I did not vote. I was there uh, when George W. Bush was president and I served for him, but I did not vote for him. Nor would I have. <laughs> Anyways, my mom was a personal fan of George W. Bush. I think she was one of five. <laughs> you know, people were loving him in the beginning, man, after 9-11. Shoot. And then he... <laughs> it's funny, because Trump never got that, like, um, where... <laughs> Remember after 9-11, everyone was like thinking George W. Bush was the best president, even though the whole thing was his fault in the first place. But you have anyways. a cool voice and personality, they say. Huh? You have a very cool voice. Thank you. <laughs> My voice is um, strange because I was bulimic, so people like think it, like I was a smoker or something. No, I mean, I smoke weed, but that's not why my voice is this way. It's because I was bulimic, so I kind of lost my voice, and now it's recovering. So every day it kind of is evolving. But thank you, because um, I'm very insecure about it. It's getting better. I was more insecure, because people always thought I was sick for a long time, because I was so hoarse when I was still bulimic. But, um, so here's the thing. It doesn't matter which way you vote. You need to realize that all of the politicians don't really have our best interests as regular people. They're very greedy. They all are either millionaires, if not billionaires. And they're looking out for their family and their friends and their best interests, not all of ours. And that's why they were willing to do this. They were willing to sabotage the country and sabotage small businesses. That's who really got sabotaged, is small businesses in this. And they're okay with that because they would prefer everything to be through the government. You know, the only reason why they like small businesses is they could tax them. But other than that, you know, the government would prefer everything to be government run. They like having the power and the control. And they really just sabotaged a lot of people's livelihoods. And it was unfair. And for one thing, they should have given us the choice if we wanted to participate in this quarantine or not. Because most people didn't want to be a part of this, and we had to be. And you know what? I heard, um, I have a friend uh, who is a nurse that she refused to wear a mask because she said this is not a deadly virus. And they were in uproar in the hospital, but they couldn't make her. Because she said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to jump into this hysteria and scare the patients when it's not true. And that's what all of these healthcare workers are doing, is they're just continuing the hysteria. Every time they say, oh, it is a deadly virus, and they continue with this, because it's not. And people are recovering like crazy. Millions of people have recovered already from this virus now over the world and only in the hundreds of thousands I think or not even hundreds of thousands I think only in the thousands like because I know it's only been around like 40,000 in the U.S. I don't know how much worldwide have died so but millions have recovered a million have recovered somewhere around there I don't remember the exact numbers but so people are only looking at the number of deaths, which they're also fabricating their no those numbers they found out that if what happens if anyone gets the virus and then dies within this period, they're counting it as a COVID virus vi COVID virus death, even if it was something like a car accident. But all they're saying is, oh, they had the virus and then they died. Or even if they died, like if they were on their deathbed, like some of the people they had to finally take out the ones that already had pneumonia. They're like, no, you can't count the people that already had pneumonia. They were already dying, like the people that were really ill and get pneumonia. Pneumonia kills people that are already really ill. And so does any virus. And so does the flu every year. And that's what this did. And this is just really unfortunate because I'm really sad about Vegas um, because most of the casinos are not going to come back. People go, oh, who cares about the casinos? But you know what? The casinos were the livelihood for everyone in Nevada. 
And so with the casinos gone, I don't know what's going to happen in Nevada. And not just Las Vegas. I mean Nevada. That's why this is ridiculous what Steve Sislek did because Las Vegas is what makes the money for the entire state especially with our weed sales here. And those are gone down the toilet. There's already dispensaries that are uh, talking about closing, too. Because those, I mean, without the tourists, you know, you only have so many locals. Um, and so I don't know what he was thinking. They, uh, what, um, what people are starting to talk about now is that they took it too far, and now they don't know what to do. And now they're trying to just figure out how to... Uh, fix this without the whole um, country erupting because people are getting pissed I mean you guys this is ridiculous so I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen we're gonna see in the coming days you know they haven't even fully opened up um we're not even off of restriction here in Nevada he still restricted us um up until I think the 15th um, of May for we're still on like home restriction technically I mean not legally but you're like recommended to stay at home fuck you sis like what's funny too is people think that staying at home means you have to stay indoors one thing you're not required to stay home at all there's no law that you have to stay home that is unconstitutional and no one is actually no one that yet I've heard of in the US has actually made it where you could not leave I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's some states, but they haven't done that here in Nevada. Um, and they better not, because this is, you guys, this is not a deadly virus. So I think they, it's beyond where they can make any more restrictions now that people are waking up. But here's the thing. People think that even when they feel restricted at home, I don't know why they're not going outside. It's like people are just staying inside. It's summertime. Get uh, get outside. I mean, now they're finally, the kids are back outside. Yeah, Rich took a bunch of photos, and it was so cute. The kids were wanting him to take photos. They were doing flips. The kids are great. They're doing these crazy flips in the air. They got some, like, I don't know how these kids do. I've never, flips were always, I could do them on a trampoline, but just without a trampoline, that's scary as crap. And these kids, crazy flips in the air. Um... And they wanted Jerry to take their photos of them in midair. They he got some good photos. But it's good to see the kids back out playing. But for a while, I mean, no one was even outdoors. It was like, you can be outside. It was like they created this hysteria. Like, oh, don't be outside. Don't be near you. Oh, you mean. But that's wearing off because there's a lot more people outside. And I'm glad to see that. It's this summer. Get outside. Don't we listen to these celebrities that are... These celebrities are saying self-quarantine. And all the photos I'm seeing is them eating in bed. I'm like... Oh, geez. That's really nice. Great role models. One thing, no one should be eating in bed. If you're eating in bed, move your TV out of your room if you can't handle it or something. Because you should not be eating in bed. That would be, like, the worst thing. And le- I mean, seriously, unless you have no issue with your diet and you're skinny and you can just eat in bed. But if you're struggling with your diet, if you're eating in bed, that's cut that out first. And that might help you lose a little weight right there. Because, I mean, geez louise. If you can't even get out of your bed to eat food, if you got to bring your food back into bed with you, then you've, you've gone too far with this quarantine. I mean, you guys, get out of your goddamn beds. Take the masks off. Go outside today. This is ridiculous. Eating in bed? Come on now. Come on. For one thing, that's just gross. You don't want food in your bed. You know what happens when you get food in your bed? You get bugs in your bed. That's what happens. Ew. People go, oh, you got careers crawling on you. What do you eat in your bed? Because if you don't eat in your bed, they usually avoid the beds. Uh, you don't see very many bugs in a bedroom if there's not food in the bedroom. And I know because we get bugs in these places. You get cockroaches and ants. They do not go in the room unless you're eating in the room. They're never in our bedroom because we don't eat in there. But they're in the places where their food is. So if you're wondering why you have bugs in other parts of your house, are you eating in those parts of the house? Just keep it in the kitchen. And then you'll keep your bugs in the kitchen too. And then you can, you know, try to not have as many keep yourself cleaner i yelled at my she's the reason we got bugs next door they are so filthy we never had ants at any of these places before but when we first got here we did because they are disgusting their place is so gross it's like coming out the front door it's just crap and um 
but uh I was able to get rid of the ant situation so we don't have them because I keep everything so clean and if you don't have and I take out the trash all the time so if you, bugs don't have things to eat you don't have bugs they want the leftover food and the crap and, and stuff you have in your bed gross get out of your bed with your food disgusting don't be eating in bed it's gross disgusting your bed is for sleeping and fucking not for eating okay Eat in, if you have to eat in front of the TV, which is still not a good idea, at least do it in the living room, my goodness. But that's also a bad idea, is the eating in front of the TV. You're always going to overeat if you're eating and watching TV. Because you're not thinking about what you're eating, and you're focused on it. And people, that's a real bad habit people have. They always want to eat when they're watching TV. And that's why we have big, big, another reason. I have many reasons why I have a BC problem. One of them is eating while watching TV. Because one thing is your brain is focused on the TV. It's not even thinking about how much you're shoveling in there. So you're not even enjoying the food at all. And then you're usually choosing food like sugar that your brain will never feel full. So if you're not paying attention and your brain's never going to feel full, that's why you eat the whole entire bag. Oh, it's all gone. I ate it all. So it's just a very bad habit to eat in front of the TV. Um, now, okay, you say, if you haven't been watching my blogs, how do I stay thin? Or how do I, how I'm too thin? Some people will say, whatever. The thing is, I can't really affect how thin I am right now too much because I'm on such a rigid diet because of my bulimia. The only thing I can do is, like Jerry said, I was a little too thin, so I can add a little oil when I'm cooking. But that's about it because everything else... My digestion got so messed up that I'm on a super rigid diet. And what that is, is I eat all organic beef, greens, and garlic. And really nothing else, just variations of that. We do like stew and hamburgers and steak when we have money, which we haven't steak in a long time. <laughs> Way too expensive. It's usually just hamburgers. But um, we do all organics, gluten-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, artificial anything free sugar free the only way i'm getting sugar is from the garlic and the um, greens and then um caffeine free and alcohol free those are the two big things so the caffeine is the big thing that most people are not accounting for where they're getting added weight and you say oh, how does caffeine make me gain weight well most people think caffeine makes them lose weight because when they drink it they feel not as hungry and they feel more energy but all that caffeine does is it numbs your senses so you feel like you have more energy and you feel less hungry but you're not really that all you're doing is you're suppressing your feelings that's what caffeine does now along with a lot of other issues like anytime you suppress your feelings you're going to end up getting depressed and all kinds of things. That's why caffeine actually ultimately leads to depression. One of the reasons. On top of the other reason why it leads to depression is because one of the hormones that you tell to chill while you're saying everything. What happens is you drink your caffeine and then it tells your body to chill. Like go into just like kind of sedentary mode and don't like process everything as well. So you were having your... Insulin hormone was processing your sugar. Well, when you told it to chill, it stopped. So then your blood sugar rises because it's not getting processed properly. Well, then your body goes, oh, gosh, my blood sugar is rising. That's the jolt you get from the caffeine. That's why you feel like you know, people like that blood sugar rise. They do the same, similar when you do a bunch of sugar, blood sugar rise, right? So they get that, and then the body goes, uh-oh too much sugar so then it starts producing more insulin well the problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat and now once the caffeine wears off all of those other ones that were just sitting chilling start up again so now you have even extra insulin because you have that insulin that now starts amping up and now the insulin that your body had added extra from the blood sugar rise so now the problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat and it tells your body to be dormant and it also tells you to be depressed basically it says go into sedentary mode which is being depressed you know like i don't want to do anything i want to sit around you know what i mean so caffeine ultimately makes you depressed and gain weight 
And every time, because every time you take a drink of that caffeine, your blood sugar rises, it numbs your, uh, you know, it numbs your senses, blood sugar rises, produces insulin, then when that comes back, that insulin gets going, then you have too much insulin, tells your body to store fat. Also, having too much insulin just causes other problems, too, because anytime you have, like, your body get out of whack, it's when you don't feel good. That's when you're going to have your ups and downs, your mood swings, your, um, maybe even where you feel lightheaded, where you might even pass out. It's the ups and downs. So you want to avoid that. You want to do something uh, throughout the day that's just keeping you more even keel. And then that keeps you healthier and looking younger and less stress and anxiety. Because all those things, your body will be feeling the stress and anxiety when you're... That's why, you know, some people get really anxious when they drink coffee because it's causing their body anxiety, all this up and down. Um... And they don't realize that, you know, but it, so years and years of that and then the added stored fat, that's where some people are gaining weight without realizing it's just from the caffeine. And then the other thing is all the artificial everything. So the problem with artificial foods is very similar to the caffeine, but your body thinks it's sugar. So like um, when your brain gets sugar, then it produces insulin. That's how it compensates, right? Like we were talking about. Well... If your brain thinks it got sugar, even if it didn't, it can still produce insulin. So that's what happens with artificial things is even though it didn't get the sugar, it thought it got sugar. So it produced insulin, but then you don't have sugar. So now you even have another imbalance. So the artificial things can cause a lot of issues because now you have an issue where you don't have the sugar, but you have all this insulin. So now you have an imbalance of too much insulin. And which tells your body to store fat and see see how all these things, these artificial things, cause confusion because your brain confuses it. And that's where people go, oh, you gotta trick your brain. No, you can't trick your brain. Your brain is your um, safety uh, mechanism. So your brain will do whatever is the most safe for you. That's what it always reverts to. So things like producing insulin is safe. Okay, your blood sugar rise, that's unsafe because then you might uh, get too excited, so I'm going to bring you down. So it's safety thing is to always bring you down Um, because that's safe. Being sedentary is safe. You're just going to sit there. You'll be all right. You won't get hurt. You know what I mean? That's what's safe for the brain. But you got to, once in a while, the reason why people think you got to trick your brain is you got to motivate your brain because your brain will only want what's safe. But here's the thing. Eventually, safe will turn to depression, which can turn to suicide, which is not safe. And my mother committed suicide. And that can happen with people. So you have to tell your brain, hey, as much as you want to just sit on the couch because that feels safe, that's going to make me depressed at the end of the day. And then I'll want to kill myself, brain, so we won't be safe. Or I won't want to kill myself, but I'll gain so much weight that we'll have health problems and then we'll be sicker. So it's like either way, whether it be even if you don't get suicidal, you just now are gaining so much weight, which causes more health problems. So it's not that you have to trick your brain, you have to motivate your brain. Say, brain, as much as you want to be safe, we're going to do this. Because a lot of your brain, I don't want to do that. Oh, you know, that's where we talk ourselves out, where your feelings say you want to do something, and your brain goes, oh, no, last time I did that, I got hurt. I ain't doing that again. That's your brain. Your feelings will always say, hey, let's go jump and enjoy ourselves. And then your brain, oh, man, last time you sprained your ankle. So that's the difference if you're confused of what's your feelings and what's your brain. Your brain is like the ninny nanny. Always telling you, oh, that's not safe. Where your feelings are usually like, your feelings are more like childlike. You know, like that's like that's what kids go and do flips. Like I was talking about earlier, and have no fear. <laughs> Jeez, they're flying like and on its hard floor. They would hit. If you know, what I mean, they're just doing it on the grass out there. So it's like, geez, um, I. I have to I think I don't have fear until I try to do something a flip and then I can't do it so I do still have some level of fear you know of things like that that I can't get over with my brain I'll be like I can do it on a trampoline but just tell me to flip right I, you're out of your mind I ain't gonna try that <laughs> fall on my head um, so you want to be childlike people think being childlike is a bad thing they act like that's a frown upon them. oh don't be like child be like a child children have a blast and they listen to their feelings and you know once in a while they get hurt but you know what they recover 
or they don't and then that's just how they went you know what I mean it's like what's your biggest concern you're gonna die well that would be the end then and you'd go on to the next place yeah I get you'd have loved ones that would miss you but they'll deal with it I know I've lost loved ones and I dealt with it it's hard but I dealt with it so it's like what's your worst fear really of most things I'm always like if it's dying well get over that you're gonna die some hey hey guess what just came in top secret you're gonna die don't know if you knew that yeah so you just don't know when so go enjoy yourself don't be like Ooh, and this whole covid thing ah it's all because people are scared of dying i'm like that's why another reason why i never feared this because i am not scared of dying at all i've tried to kill myself three times and i almost died several times i've had some crazy near-death experiences um I told on my car in a DUI. Um, I uh, had some very crazy drunk things where I got very, very hurt um, and where I almost died. And then I almost died from my bulimia. So to me, I'm like, bring it on if it's going to kill me. Jeez Louise, this whole thing of like stopping our life because of that we're going to die. For one thing, this is not a virus that's going to most likely kill you. You got a 0.1% chance. But even if it did, who cares? Okay, you say you have kids. They'll deal with it. Kids lose parents. I lost my mom at 20. It sucked. Kids lose parents even younger than that. But you know what? It's a part of life. People die. And the whole thought of stopping society for even if this had been a more deadly virus is really out of line. Because for one thing, it's really um, insulting to anyone who has ever lost loved ones in any other way. I mean, like, what about when we lose tons of people in war and stuff? We don't stop the world for that. We send them off every day for that. You know, I was in the military, and I joined at 17 years old. My parents had a sign for me to go, and I could have died in the war. And, yeah, you get, okay, you get a little flag folded up in a nice ceremony with the color guard and stuff. Um, but you sure don't stop the world. And now we're stopping the world for every 97-year-old grandparent that dies. And I have to hear about it. And I have to hear about one 18-year-old kid that they claim is healthy. Healthy is an adjective. Um, it doesn't mean anything. So everyone has a different definition of what healthy is. So I would like to see that person's what they eat. Uh, if they're drinking caffeine, if they're smoking cigarettes, if they're drinking alcohol. I'd like to see that person's whole health thing. If they're overweight. All of these things before I declare if that person is healthy when I hear of one incident of some healthy kid that died. So um, I'm so tired of this shenanigans of this virus and the people still walk around with masks. It's less and less, luckily. I'm seeing less and less. Thank goodness. And people are starting to take them off while I'm out in public. I'll see them. They're tired of them. I saw a guy at the bus stop, had it on. He stood there long enough. I didn't have mine on. He finally took his off. He was probably like, I feel like an idiot being the only one with a stupid mask on anymore. You know, it's funny. I was like, oh, he took it off his mask. Cool. I don't know why, but that's cool. Um, and it's just... And then you get the glares, though, from the people that still wear their mask. Oh, God. They act like you're the one person that's going to contaminate the whole world because you didn't wear your mask. Jay Louise, I almost had one Uber driver lose his mind because I wouldn't put the hand sanitizer on. I said, I don't put that crap on my hands. I'm not putting that horrible, nasty. For one thing, that is so many chemicals. That smell, we do not use things with smells like that around here. We use very, very natural stuff. I get all of my products from either can of hemp, which is CBDs, or from Whole Foods, which has like, you know, I get the ones with no, that none of it where it says no to all that stuff, you know. No SLS, no none of this stuff, no Laurel, Lawrence, whatever that, you know, sodium. They have some, Lawrence is the thing that everyone's on, the SLS thing, whatever. Anyways, um, all of that crap, that in and back, I mean, you can just smell the chemicals of that crap. I ain't putting that on my hands. No siree, Bob. I did not put one drop of hand sanitizer during this whole thing you can all shove that hand sanitizer up your own asses because that stuff stinks i'm not putting that in one uber driver was so appalled i said i'll get out of your uber if you want but i'm not putting that on there mm -mm. i do not put chemicals on my hands not unless i'm cleaning and i do that very lightly i hate using even chemicals for cleaning but you have to use a little bit um <coughs> excuse me 
so people, oh, you cough, you must be sick. That's just from my bronchus. But anyway, so uh, the other thing is viruses are not spread from bacteria. Antibacterial soaps and hand sanitizer stops bacteria. It doesn't have to do a virus, but the one thing it does do is it kills all of your good bacteria. So antibacterial soap is not actually that great because there's actually healthy bacteria that you want on your body. It helps fight diseases. It's part of our immune system. It's part of our defense. When you wash it off every two seconds and for 20 seconds, make sure you're not there's nonsense are right and everywhere. Um, then you're going to take off all your good bacteria, and then you're actually going to make yourself more susceptible to this virus in the long run. Now, there is a level of good hygiene for health. Yes, and most of us have that already. I'm saying this level of now washing your hands way more than you ever did, and all that nonsense. Yeah, you do need to wash your hands after you use a restroom or something, you know what I mean? Certain times, you need to wash your hands, get some of that unkies off of there, whatever you got on there. But beyond that, all day long, you don't need to be washing your hands because you're going to wash off all your good bacteria and make yourself more susceptible to the virus if it were to come around. And here's the thing, you guys. The virus is a regular flu virus. All it is that's different is it affects the respiratory. So people just weren't freaked out about a little more because it you know it was more where you couldn't breathe and a lot of coughing and stuff but so not throwing up and diarrhea where you would normally think of the flu so it's more affect the respiratory so i guess people just didn't like that because it's a little bit uh can take you back if you you know are a coughing to that level where you feel like you're gonna choke and stuff and so i think it was just an uncomfortable virus and that's what most people say it would just lasted a long time and wasn't uncomfortable but you can totally get over it you guys and people are like a million people have gotten over it and tom hanks and his wife they got over it right away and that's what i was like right away when i saw they got over it in the beginning and then she was singing hip-hop songs like the next week and they're like in their 60s and i was like oh i guess it's not that serious and I've been saying that since the beginning, and everyone is acting like I was crazy. Now more and more people are starting to side with me. And it's not even about siding with me. I don't care about that. I'm not one of those people that need to be right. I want you guys to be aware of that, what the government did to us. That's why I want you all to know. It doesn't matter. You can call me. You can call me. I'm wrong all the time. I'll admit that. I say things wrong, okay? So sometimes I might say something wrong on here, but I always try to say what I believe at that time. Does that make sense? So like, I'm never lying, but I might say something wrong. But then I, if I figure that out later, I'll correct myself. But in that moment, I believed it to be true, whatever I say, always, okay? And the things I'm telling you guys now about, like, diet, I've had those, that's through empirical study. I do it myself. Empirical means I tried it myself. So those were trial and error of everything. So I feel very strongly when I give um, the advice about the diet because I've tried it and I had Jedi Rich try it. And now he lost. He always wants to say it's closer to 125 pounds because that's when we stopped weighing him. But I think it's closer to 150 pounds is what he lost. But we stopped weighing him when he had lost 125 pounds. We don't have a scale anymore. We don't weigh ourselves. Um, and he's lost more weight since then. But doing what I said, all organics, GMO-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, artificial anything free. So basically what you're doing is you're eating the food from nature and then caffeine and alcohol-free. Those are the two people don't want to get rid of. But um, you're eating the food from nature. So think of like what you would have eaten back when people had to find their food, whether it be hunting or gathering, um, like the natives. So I'm actually part Native American. Um, and I feel very proud of that, but it, unfortunately, I don't know much about the history of it. I actually just messaged my dad about it. He's, he doesn't even know. So it's a long, complicated thing of my grandparents. But anyways, um, a lot of not talking to people, I guess, you know, so we don't have the history there. So I'm trying to find out, but I want to know more about it. But my great-great-grandma was Native American um, in California. So my family's from California, like natives California. And... Um, so the idea would be, like, my Native family and anyone, especially if a Native, I, I like to think of where you're from, too, as, like, probably the best fruits and veggies for you, too, because that's, like, 
where your body is probably the most acclimated. But that's more my theory. I don't know about that. But what I like to think is, like, what area, what would you have there? And then that's probably what you were supposed to eat. You know what I mean? Um, but here's the thing. I, the go, rule of thumb um, I do is what is could be grown from nature without any science in the sense of in a lab of changing the things. Does that make sense? So none of this genetically modified stuff, none of the steroids, hormones, changing coloring, adding things to seeds and things. So you want the from nature what the seed was, what the animal was, that's what you want to eat and that is what will help you stay thin because it's the conventional is what they call they call it organic and conventional conventional is everything that's not organic um so if you go to a whole foods they'll break it out conventional and organic when you go to the produce section um so what i'm saying is by organics that's the food that is supposed to be the closest to nature now of course they have tainted all food now it's not truly but that's the closest you're going to get that's our only option now usda organic in, in the u.s some countries have better organics i know europe has better organics than the u.s because theirs is less tainted we've messed with our stuff so much we've messed with corn so much that there's no organic corn seed left they call it organic but it's not because it's just been messed with so much like it's been genetically modified so many times so there's no like original corn seed They've modified the seed so many times that they lost the original. Does that make sense? So, because um, that's how organics, you have to plant organic seeds now and everything. I mean, because they have um, changed all of our food. They thought that they would make it better, but they're finding now people are getting sicker, more diseases, more obesity, um, more cancer than ever before due to the food um, and the caffeine and the alcohol but so if you eat food from nature so as in animals real animals this whole vegan thing throw it out the window unless you want to be overweight and struggle with your weight I'm sorry eating animals is a part of nature and now we don't want cruelty to animals that's why we choose organic because they're conventional they don't necessarily treat the animals fairly that's why I don't another reason why I don't eat it for many reasons one would be the treatment to animals the other would be I don't like it for myself which I think those are the two most important things I don't want to put that in my body and I don't want them to treat that animal that way so whatever they put in the animal's body goes into your body so if they feed that animal hormones steroids you know whatever they're giving them you're going to consume it same with the plants and veggies so this is not just a oh if i'm vegan i avoid that no it's the same problem with the plants and veggies they're giving them steroids and hormones and they want the apples to look certain size certain um, freshness certain color and um, they preserve them now you know and if you get organics, your food does not last nearly as long as the other stuff. You'll see. Put a conventional apple next to an organic apple, see which one spoils first. And people go, oh, man, that's why I don't want organics. It doesn't last as long and it's smaller. Yeah, because it's real food. That's how food used to be. Now they made this fruit and stuff that lasts forever. So we're seeing, you put these apples in the fridge and they will last forever. You're like... Gee Louise, that doesn't seem right. This should eventually go bad. And it's like they don't. The conventional ones like never go bad. Um, me and Jerry Rich figured that out. We were like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> um, this is when we were still eating it. We were like, geez, these things, you could leave them in there for literally months on end. And they're just as fresh. Um, organics, no, you got to eat the stuff or toss it because it goes bad. But people go, oh, it's so expensive. Yes, because that is because it's real food and because they're treating the animals fairly. So they're not doing hormones, not doing steroids, not doing um, um, uh, antibiotics. And they're also, uh, you know, not putting them in cages. You can get pasture raised, cage free, um, humane uh, treatment. Like you can, you can, all these things are on there. You can even, some of them, I know what the eggs would tell you how much. Um, room they give them to graze and stuff and all these they write about the animals so the organics really like to you know let you know that the animals were treated fairly and we do the grass-fed beef we do organic grass-fed pasture-raised beef um so then i feel comfortable eating that you say oh well you're eating dead things that's the argument of the vegans um you're always eating dead things whether it be plants whether it be something made in a lab is still a living organism. So you're always eating death, and eating death is a part of life, and it's also where you gain knowledge. So eating animals, you get smarter, bottom line. 
And here's the thing. Um, plants should get smarter too. But the problem with the vegan and vegetarian diet on top of a lot of other things, one of the problems is that you're consuming way too much of the plants. Because the amount of protein you need of animal protein to suffice you for the day and then the amount of like greens or other things you would need is insane like you could have like one little steak and that'd be all you need and then you need like barrels full of um the fruits and the veggies in order to be the same amount of like comparable nutrition and then this is all going to be sugar so that's why the vegan diet doesn't work because all of these things over here that are not the animal protein have higher sugar so even if let's say you have your seven grams of protein over here and you're trying to just get to seven grams of protein with all this stuff but with those seven grams there's going to be so much more sugar so it'll be seven grams of protein to like let's say four grams of sugar or even more so you're never going to have as lean of protein as you get from animal protein even the artificial when they do that like beyond beef or beyond meat or whatever ones those always have too many carbs because they're made with things that are higher in carbs than animal meat a lot of them are made some of them are made with peas um you know one of those burgers is made with peas i don't know if you guys know that like like baked like the peas you know like the green peas they make it a, um i think it's the one from uh one of the um fast food restaurants or something but peas are going to have higher carbs than animal protein so even though you think you're eating something that tastes just like a beef burger and you think you're getting, oh, this has seven grams of protein, but with that seven grams of protein, you're getting so much more sugar. That's why a vegan diet will always make you fatter than someone on an animal protein diet. Because even if you think you're getting the protein the same, combo, like let's say you're eating hamburger for, per hamburger, like this person ate their beef burger, you ate your Beyond Meat burger. But in the same meal, you got way more sugar, even if you just ate the burger and nothing else. So that's why, and now tack on each meal, you're getting more sugar per meal, each meal, where they're still at zero over here if they're doing their beef. So that's where the pounds really start to add up when you're doing vegan. And that would be assuming if you were doing like a burger. Most people are choosing things like pasta e or bread e or, um, a, a veggie and fruit, you know, as they're well, that's very high carbs. Veggies and fruit have very high carbs, especially fruit. Fruit is extremely high in sugar, so you want to eat fruit in very small amounts. So that's where I go back to in nature. Think of, that's where I like to think of maybe where you're from. So like, if you're from the tropics, then maybe tropical fruit would be more your thing. But I don't know for sure if this is the case. But this is kind of just my own theory of that. But I do know that. Fruit should be in very small amounts. It should be as if you had to pick it yourself and it had to grow in season. See, what happened now is we have fruit available for all seasons and in mass quantities. It used to be fruit was only seasonal where you were at, you know, whatever would grow where you're at. And um, you would only be able, you'd have to grow it and then you'd pick it. So you would only have, you know, so much fruit. Now you get bowls of fruit, throw it in a blender, and we call it a smoothie. Um, and then that goes straight into your bloodstream. So if you don't know, liquids are the worst thing you can consume if you're trying to lose weight. Because liquids go right into your bloodstream. You don't use any energy to digest them. So they're the worst thing for weight loss. People that go on these liquid diets is the worst thing they can do because you want to use energy to chew, to digest. You want to eat food. You do not want to liquefy your food. All that does is makes it go right into your bloodstream. So that's just instant sugar. See what? Your body does is it breaks down everything to sugar. All food gets broken down into sugar ultimately. But you want it to take a long time. Meat is the one that takes the longest to break down to sugar. And by the time it breaks down to sugar, there's nothing left because you've used it all. What happens with the juices is you have not used it, so it all gets stored as fat. All of the extra sugar gets stored as fat when you don't use it. And if you don't use it immediately, like if you didn't immediately go burn it off, and most people cannot immediately burn off one of those uh, smoothies. You think you can when you go to the gym, but you can't. Tell you what, 
I used to do some intense workouts at the gym. I did this heat training class. It was an hour and 15 minutes of circuit training with this Nazi-like instructor. She was insane. She was like 80 years old, but the woman, she wasn't that old, but she was like in her 60s, and she had the most stamina. I mean, I couldn't keep up with her. She did a kickboxing class, too, and the woman was insane. And I would do that hour and 15 minutes nonstop. It was nonstop. She would not let you. Your break was running and place kind of getting a drink of water was like your break but you had to keep running in place get a drink of water and it was hour 15 class i would look i had my apple watch and i'd be like oh i was doing smoothies and i'd be thinking oh i you know and we were tracking our calories at the end of an hour 15 i was looking if i burnt like 200 calories i'm like you got it come, come on this watch ain't working come on you know what i mean and it's just the, the reality of how much you're burning at the gym is not comparable to the amount you're usually taking in before the gym or after the gym. So what happens is people are thinking, oh, I'll work it off, but they can't work off that much sugar. And that's where we've lied to children. Um, I know Michelle Obama was doing this thing when Obama was president about they were trying to get the kids exercising. I forget what it was called, but it was something about the motivation for a certain amount of time a day they were supposed to exercise exercise and I watched a documentary on it and they kept the doctors kept telling the kids that it was literally that they just are being too in, inactive that they need to be more active and it's not the case there's not enough activity for them to work off the amount of sugar that they are taking in on a daily basis through all of these means that we don't realize be it the artificial be it the vegan and vegetarian option be it the pastas be it the smoothies be it the protein shakes be it the protein bars be it the fruit be it the, this that that we think is healthy that is just the, the caffeine it's just not the juices the juices are the worst if you are giving your kids juice please stop please please stop it's it's one of the best things I could give advice for your children. Stop giving them juice. For real. Juice is like worse than giving them a candy bar in the morning. It is all sugar, especially something like orange juice. It is all sugar. It is right into their bloodstream. And it's just going to be stored as fat. And then it's going to get them all wired. And then they're going to start producing insulin. And then they're going to be tired. So it's the worst thing. They do not give your kids orange juice in the morning or milk. The things that they have chose for uh, breakfast, cereal, cereal is all sugar. Cereal, are you kidding me? And if it's not sugar, they add sugar. It's like if it's the one's not sugary enough, then people add sugar. Cereal is just, I mean, and it's, it's grains. I don't know why people are eating grains. Then milk, and then they usually throw some fruit in there, which is sugar, or they add sugar, and then they got the fruity pebbles, of, uh, you know, kind of cereals that are just sugar. And this is what we think is a balanced breakfast for our kids, you know, and then they give them orange juice and then coffee. Most of the kids are drinking coffee. Oh, my, you are setting your kid up for a failure at school, which they're not in school right now. But please, please stop giving your kids juice and milk in the morning before school and cereal. You are not doing them any favors. They need protein. They need real meat protein before school. That is what they need. And they need to drink water because they're usually dehydrated. And especially from the night of sleeping, you need to wake up and drink water. You're always dehydrated during the night, and they're probably extra dehydrated because of all the juice and energy drinks and caffeine and milk and things that they're drinking. Best thing you can do for your kid is give them water in the morning and some sort of meat in the morning, a real animal meat. I know it don't sound fun in the morning. People don't want meat. They want, like, fruit, fruit. They want light things in the morning. Fruit is just sugar, you guys. Fruit, you can have very small amounts. Like, maybe have three berries and maybe a half a banana, half a small banana. If that's what you want for fruit, then you have that. But if you're eating more than that, then you're eating too much fruit. So then that, no. And fruit's, like, once a day if you're going to have fruit. We don't even bother with fruit. It's too high in sugar. But if you want to have fruit, people think fruit's like a free-for-all. Oh, fruit's healthy. It's got antioxidants. Yes, in tiny amounts. But once you eat more, now you just are feeding your cancer. Antioxidant, they say, helps fight cancer, right? But sugar feeds cancer. So if you keep eating fruit, you're going to feed your cancer. Sugar... 
Cancer lives off of only sugar. Bottom line, if you cut out sugar, your cancer will go into remission. It is as simple as that. That's the cure to cancer, folks. Cut out sugar. And in all means of sugar, people go, oh, people have cut out sugar and they're still dying of cancer. Because they were probably still doing things like caffeine. All of those things are still getting your blood sugar rising. All of those things still feed the things in your body. Do you understand? Like, your body will live off of that too. Like, the cancer, like, oh, you know, we're all, we're make this work. You know what I mean? Like, it, it learns to make anything work when you're giving the crappy stuff to it. But when you give it healthy, it can't survive. Bottom line, the things just die off when they're not given sugar. Candida dies off, uh, your diabetes goes away. Cancer goes into remission. Most diseases go away. Disorders go away. Aches and pains go away because you're taking off the weight and the pressure on the organs as you start to eat better. And well, lo and behold, all your problems are solved all due to just eating better. And you, the things that you thought would never go away, old injuries. Jedi Rich had some, um, had really injured his leg where he'd been limping for years. We never thought it would go away. It's almost all like better now. We, we massage it and stuff because you gotta you massage yourself to get this stuff out. It's like you had all these years of gunk, and it's not gonna be overnight that it's all gonna be a, go away. But overnight, if you change your diet, you'll start to feel better. That's the beauty of this is right away you'll feel better, but it's going to take a while. I mean, it took us two years to get where we're at now of solid of what we've been doing, and it took even longer than that where we started with the organics, but two years of since we cut out the caffeine, where that's when it really... The caffeine is the big one that people don't want to let go either because everyone's highly addicted. I know. I was so addicted, you guys. I started drinking coffee at the age of five, and I drink it every day since the age of five except for when I was in basic training they made us you weren't allowed to have caffeine during basic training so I stopped for six weeks and then as soon as I got out of basic training right back to the caffeine so that was the only time and that was really good now that I think about that I didn't think about how good that was that we that I wasn't drinking caffeine that's probably good for people and then they right away so they also stopped smoking cigarettes you know, not smoke cigarettes and stuff so that's really good for people in basic training but then right after they go right back to everything but um Yes, I went through basic training, and I also went through survival school. So I was a flyer on the AWACS plane, which is our surveillance plane. It's the one with the big radar dome. It's like this, this Boeing 757, which is like a regular uh, commercial plane, but then it had the big radar dome, that black disc with the stripe. Yeah, that was the plane I was on. Um, my job was um, to track planes on the plane. So we t uh, spoke with the um, fighter pilots and let them know where the um, enemy and friendly planes were. So I was basically like an air traffic controller in the sky. So that was my job when I was in the Air Force. So I, they sent me through survival school. And, um, you know, the, the, the interesting thing now that I think about what's really actually good about both survival school and basic training is they do, you know, Take people to cut out things like cigarettes and alcohol and caffeine, and um, and people do really well during that time. And I didn't, it just it's kind of down on my right now. I was like, oh, that's a good point. That's probably why people because so many people are addicted to caffeine and we so rarely cut it out. Um, and the military must have realized that that they without probably without even realizing they probably thought it was more like a punishment, but they actually people are probably doing better in that six weeks without the caffeine. Crazy. Anyway, so we cut it out two years ago, and I've never felt better. But I did not feel well right away. So if you've cut it out, and you listen to me, and you're like, true, you, Jay, do I feel fucking terrible. That's only because you're going through caffeine withdrawals. Those will subside. Um, and you're probably feeling depressed. That's one of the big things that you'll feel when you cut out caffeine. Because caffeine was kind of like giving you that little boost even like I said it was contributing to depression but it gave you that little boost like you look forward to that you know when you get up in the morning and so you got used to that habit of that boost so then without that you'll just feel the depression but you were already depressed the caffeine was just kind of like you didn't realize it but it was actually like I said because you kept producing insulin and it was telling your body to go into depressed mode um but you we're unaware. So that's what happens when you first stop drinking caffeine is you go, oh man, I am depressed. I'm gonna take this jacket off, I'm getting hot, you guys, hold on. Um, 
can. Uh, once you cut out the caffeine, it's amazing how quickly the pounds shed off. So I was talking about that. I actually have a tendency to now get too thin, but um, I can't eat certain things. So the only way I can gain weight is by adding in in each meal you know like i have to add in maybe a little more oil because i can't really add in any more we only we we make two pounds of meat and that's what we have you know so because um my digestive system is so messed up i got insane candida overgrowth from my bulimia and if you don't know what candida overgrowth is you should read about it online because it's really interesting but um because most people probably have it and don't realize. So that's why I said go research yourself to see the symptoms. But what it, the way I knew I had it was because when I saw my bulimia, um, see, when you are bulimic, you eat and then you throw up. Uh, I had gotten to where my body would just throw up naturally. Like I didn't stick my fingers down my throat. I could just eat and then I could just go and just throw up. With it, just like opening my mouth. And, um, well, what happened when I tried to stop is that I had to physically like hold like stop myself from throwing up it was very very difficult and what would happen is my stomach would bloat so I would eat something and no matter what it was it could be an apple the smallest something it could be just one tiny thing and then I would feel like I needed to throw up and my stomach would start to bloat out like like it was nine months pregnant and this went on for like a year and I would every I would try everything this is when I researched and I didn't know what was going on anything I ate I would bloat so all I the only way I could work is if I didn't eat all day I could work and then I would be so hungry and then after uh, work I could eat and then I would be sick but I was barely able to work even though that's where we spent most of our money we had, had savings and I used it during that time because I was out of it for about a year um, and I would um, the, oh yeah, the only way I would be able to work is if I had starved myself because once I ate one thing it would blow and it was so uncomfortable it was not just like it was like like it was going to burst because what had happened is I got candida overgrowth and candida is a fungus that lives inside of us that everyone has and when you're eating properly it functions fine and it's just part of your body I don't know exactly what it does but it just it doesn't bother you um, but once you start eating really sugary things or being bulimic or antibiotics cause it have antibiotics so you might be getting it from the animals if you're eating a bunch of conventional meat that they're putting a bunch of antibiotics in there and you don't realize and um the uh, gmos and the caffeine all these things um they contribute to can so anything that's um a bad environment so what candida like is their fungus so they like to live in like dark um damp like dingy environments so if you make your body a bad environment fungus will go nuts because they like like a dirt like think of your stomach if you were eating really gross stuff and really treating your bat your body poorly think of what your stomach fluids would be like the candida flourish when it's a bad environment when you're eating healthy they don't tend to like that they love the dinginess they like to be in there because they're a fungus and then they eat sugar and then they live in your fat cells so the fatter you are and the more sugar they love that because they're just camping out in your fat cells and just eating all that sugar um well when you stop being bulimic those guys flare up because they're like hold on i'm not getting the sugar because what bulimics do is they eat a bunch of sugar and then they throw it up but they the reason why bulimia ends up not working much is because things start grabbing onto it and you very quickly before you can throw up your body starts grabbing on to the sugars and so you end up uh, digesting it without realizing it because like I said it's so quick so that's why sometimes bulimia long term doesn't work people end up gaining weight because even though they're throwing up their body's grabbing on all the sugar and doing it before you can even throw it up um and so what was happening is the candida was mad because I was not giving them what they wanted. So when you see the most flare-ups with your candida is when you actually try to get healthy. That's the crazy thing. You might not even notice it until you change your diet. Then they go, hold on. And then because they're uh, like, wait, why are we not getting fed? And they're in survival mode and they want to be fed. They'll die without sugar. So when they start dying off, they start releasing toxins. And that's where you'll see all kinds of complications like bloating, nausea, um, low sex drive, depression, really intense salt and sugar cravings, um, really insane, insane exhaustion where you're just tired 
24 7 um nothing it, it sounds like a good idea just no motivation um um uh, as sinus problems um skin rashes um i'm trying to think go look at candida overgrowth and all of this is due to the candida um being mad because you're now not giving it what it wanted but the way to get rid of it is you have to starve it out by not eating sugar and then you can finally get it at bay but mine was so out of whack that it's been taken this many years and i still if i were to eat something else i would still bloat because I, mine is still like so because i got it so bad from 15 years of bulimia so most of you guys won't have my level of extremeness but you probably weren't bulimic for 15 years so i had such a candida overgrowth issue like i even went before i stopped my bulimia i was trying to you know i was trying to have issues and um so we were looking into things but i didn't want to stop being bulimic you know but so we did things like um colon cleanse uh the, the um the where you go to the place those are amazing when they flush you out you know the your colon um you do it for like an hour and they just flush it out it's it's, it's amazing experience it feels great if you guys never done that but um she was like you have so much yeast inside you and i didn't know what she meant yeast is the fungus and um she was like whoa because that was what was causing it it was just and so when you do those you'll it'll come out you'll see the yeast but yeast is a bad thing people for a while were taking yeast or putting yeast like in smoothies and stuff no, 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 no more yeast. Yeast you do not want. Yeast is a problem. Then you get way overgrowth of yeast. You do not want that. But, um, so that's what candida overgrowth is. So if you're experiencing any of these things, and the biggest thing I would say it would be the, um, it, oh, one of the things is the weight gain. Like, un, uh, like, weight gain where you just can't, like, take it off for nothing, even if you were just, like, trying to exercise and just nothing's working. So that weight gain that just stays on there. And then, um, the, it really intense like where if you're just always hungry like it don't matter what you eat you just constantly are hungry for like sugar and salty things that's candida and then uh, they also love oil because like fatty things because they live in your fat so if you're eating really high fat you know watch that so you want to watch your sugar and your fat content but um look up candida overgrowth a lot of people i think have it and they don't realize because everyone has yeast inside it's just uh, what level has yours been overgrown or if it's in the normal amount but um so that is how I figured out the diet is I because of the bloating I had to research so I read about everything I read about everything that caused bloating I mean because I was desperate I was like I <laughs> I looked up I mean, I read article after article, um, uh, you know, medical thing after medical thing, you know, the scientific, I mean, anything I could get my hands on about bloating. And then that's when I figured out all of these things that now I figured out. Because this was back in, I started doing my research in 2015. That was when I first stopped being bulimic, but then I teeter-tottered with it until 2016. I didn't fully figure it out and take it fully seriously until uh, 2017. And that's when I stopped. So 2016, I still was having bouts of uh, throwing up and stuff because I was still eating regular food. And um, I cannot eat regular food. My body can't digest it at this point because I've destroyed my digestive system so bad. So I have to eat the way I do. And I recommend it for everyone because I think the food is bad for everyone. Now, you might say maybe it's just because you, because you're, but Jenna Rich is the same thing as me and he's feeling just as amazing as him in the diet works for him too so that's why i think like it can work for everyone but i am an extreme case so maybe you don't have to be as extreme as me of just beef greens and garlic but definitely do organics you know so just do organics and you'll feel a lot better and the caffeine no one wants to let go of the caffeine Actually, I need to make Jerry Rich some um, organic beef burgers right now. Oh, I've been meaning to put up on the website. Um, I put it up to Twitter. I have not even had a chance to. I've been so busy, guys. Um, but I took some photos of when I was cooking my beef burgers the other day um, uh, for to just show you guys. They're actually they're so delicious. They are absolutely the best thing, and it's just such simple ingredients. It's just organic beef, organic rosemary, organic thyme. Um, olive oil organic olive oil and then i do some uh garlic organic garlic 
and then I do some greens. So usually kale and collard greens. And and I just put the burgers on top of the kale. And it's the most delicious meal. We eat it every meal and we love it. And you can eat like I eat like between two to three of the burgers. They're like like mini burgers. And Jared eats from five to six per meal. So like you can get a good portion of meat too and then be super trim. We go through like six pounds of beef a day. <laughs> People are, oh my god, I killed all those cows. I know, it sucks that the animals have to die, but that's a part of life. And you know what? A cow wants to go to the next dimension. They don't want to graze this earth forever. Like, they want to go. They're like, they're like to the vegans, they're like, why are y'all trying to save us? We don't want to be here forever. Are you kidding? And all the ones that worship the cows, let them go to the next place. Being on this planet as an animal is not that much fun. Some animals have more fun than others, but the majority of them is not that much fun. Not even for your dog, it's not that much fun. Um... But if we were like, oh, well, you know, we're so much more than the dog. Well, actually, the dog has figured out that he don't have to do much, and you all are doing it for him. So the dog's pretty dang smart. He don't have to go to work. You guys bring home the food. So the animals are pretty smart. It's funny someone said, oh, that we're way smarter than animals. I'm like, oh, really? Same with the pigeons. Pigeons have me trained to bring him you know, food, which I can hear him. You can... Once you listen to the birds, then you can hear them all the time. But most people don't hear the birds. It's funny. Like, they're always there. But if you are not listening to them, then you won't hear them. But once you hear them, then they'll wake you out of bed. Like, you can hear just the birds. Not even, like, singing. They just they just make this, like, the pigeons make a cooing noise. They're so cute. They coo all morning. But, um, anyways, um, I was going to say one more thing, and then I'm going to jump off here, but I... I kind of lost my chance of what I was saying, but, um, yeah, so, the, oh, so animals want to go to the next dimension, so going to the next dimension is a good thing, so, like, um, I, my mother committed suicide, and my brother died in a motorcycle accident, and they're both in the next dimension, I don't know what that is, and the reason why we don't know, people go, why can't we know, if we can communicate with the dead, or if you say you are, then why can't you know where they're at, well, because, here's the thing, if they were to explain where they're at, there is nothing on Earth that can explain where they're at because it's something different than Earth. So there are no, there's no vocabulary to explain. They would have to use earthly things. They'd have to be like, oh, it's like this. But it's not like that. It's completely different. So there is no vocabulary to express to us what they're experiencing. That's why we don't know until we go there. And that's the beauty of it is the surprise of it. If we knew, then it would only be things that are in earth realms. That's why when people have this concept of heaven and they put it in realms of earth things, that's limiting. Because heaven should be your heaven. is going to be something that you can't even imagine. And that's why it you don't know it because it's something that you don't know you can't know things you don't know you know what I mean like you can't know something that doesn't exist in your thought and in this universe so there's only you know a collective of knowledge here that we have so like you can't even know about something you know that no one else has ever seen like how do you describe something that if you've never seen it like how do you describe the color red to someone that only sees yellow like if someone is colorblind and only sees yellow how do you describe red they might see a variation of yellow but they don't know what red is because they don't know red. So when someone is in another dimension experiencing what they're there we don't know because nothing here is comparable to say and if it was then that would be a shitty place because it'd be just like this place <laughs> it's not going to be it's going to be better no matter what you believe and there is no punishment of that sort where people think they're going to be punished or rewarded it's more just like you get the clarity now so you can enjoy yourself now and then in the next life you can enjoy yourself but everyone's trying to not enjoy themselves now for the next life no you're supposed to enjoy yourself in this one live whatever you live here and then enjoy yourself in the next one it's not this this one is what leads to this one and uh, what you do here is what happens here that is only to make you try to do good things here and do what the church wants you to do and pay them money every Sunday and make sure you're doing it online if you ain't coming in um, so 
They and guess what else? The church is also one of the reasons why Las Vegas is shut down because Governor Sisolak goes and asks twenty bishops what they, he thinks they should do about Sin City, and of course they said keep it shut down because they don't want it ever open, and that's pretty much what's going to happen. They got their wish. Vegas will. I don't know when it's going to even open at all. I mean, they don't even know when it when the first casino is going to open. They don't even have a date. They don't know. It just depends on if people are going to be here. They have to wait to see if people come before they can even... They're trying to do reservations, but they're saying, we might cancel your reservations if there aren't enough reservations. So they're trying to see if there's any interest. And then if there is, then they'll open like one or two casinos. But if not, if there's no interest, then nothing will be open. And then Governor Sislek and all the bishops and Pope Francis will be happy they're picking shit because they got Sin City closed. And then they convince all you guys that this was for the good for the next life. We're closing Sin City because that's the devil's place. And hey, no, 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 no. One thing, what did the devil ever do that was so bad? People always say, oh, the devil made me do this. What did he make you do? What did he make you do? I mean, what did the devil really make you do? Answer me that question, honestly. What one thing did the devil make you do? And here's the other thing. Most of the things that people say to the devil is like things like sex, drugs, rock and roll, partying. They don't sound like that bad of things. But our society has deemed them bad. But that don't make them bad. And those are the things that people associate with Satan and the devil. Yeah, you should, because those are. But those aren't bad things. So then you say, oh, murder. And that's not Satan. Satan's not for murder. You guys choose murder. You guys choose to kill someone who kills someone. Satan didn't choose that. We chose to murder people that murder people. And we chose to murder people. I never understood why it's okay to murder someone that murdered someone. They say, eye for an eye. You know what else it says in the Bible? To turn the other cheek. And to take the log out of your own eye before they take the speck out of your neighbor's. So that wouldn't be the same concept as eye for an eye. So why don't you choose? They, people want to pick and choose which things that make it most convenient. I know the Bible. I grew up Christian. I had to read the thing forward to back every year. My mom had this thing that every day he told you which verses to read so you could read the whole Bible every single year. Every day you had to read and get the damn chapters. <sighs> and if you got behind, ah, jeez, you got like four days of chapters to read. Man, I had to do that. And I used to have to memorize the Bible verses. I know some of them, I don't remember very many of them. But um, I went to a Christian school. So I know this stuff, and I'm telling you, it's bullshit. It's all to make you guys try to behave and do what the government or the religion wants you to do. And government and religion are very tied together, even though they're not supposed to be. They're extremely tied together. We have in God we trust on our money. So... The reality is the government is only as powerful as we allow them to be. And right now you guys are allowing the government to be really powerful by allowing them to shut down everything. We didn't have to. We did not have to. If everyone had just said no, I'm not closing my business. But instead everyone did. So then the one person will get arrested. But if everyone had stood strong and said no, I will not close my 40-year-old business for this, for a virus that has a 0.1% of death. Chance, I mean, and 99.9% .9 chance that you're going to recover? And I'm going to lose my business that I've had for 40 years or something, most of these people? Or my casino that I have? The casino should have told Governor Sisak to go fuck himself. I don't know. I think, oh, because the gaming. They should have told the gaming license because who's going to shut him down? For one thing, the 
mayor didn't want it shut down. So I think all of the police and the mayor and the casino should have told that retard up in Carson City to go fuck himself. Because this is Las Vegas. But instead, they fucking closed everything and now they sabotage their whole city for that retard. Good job, you guys. I hope you're happy. Makes no sense. No, I get each individual business couldn't do that because the, the, the police were going in and shutting them down. But if they had stood united as people, we're stronger than the government when we're united as people. And that's what they don't like. That's why they don't like people like me. They take me down all the time on apps because I speak revolution. And I get sent silenced all the time. And then I go to the app and the app reviews all my stuff and they say, no, she's allowed. She's just speaking the, her mind. That's loud. But people try to silence me all the time, especially Governor Sisek. Once I told him off, he got me silenced immediately on Twitter, which is hard to get silenced immediately on Twitter. You have to have some clout because I've gone at a lot of people <laughs> and they've tried to flag me and stuff. And you got to have some clout to get silenced. And they brought me down like that. Um, it comes back because I didn't do anything that wrong. But he just gets to get on me and they took down my tweet. They couldn't take down my account because I, I don't violate. I didn't, not even my tweet violated. They say it did, but that's because they want to uh, um, cater to the politicians and all nonsense. You know, some of these people with verified accounts get a little more clout than the rest of us. So, um, people are starting to protest, and they should, and they should more. And the government is doing these little stimulus checks to try to keep the peace. They're like, oh, don't be upset, you're $1,200. $1,200 is a slap in the face to anyone that had a business. We didn't even get the money. We don't qualify for any stimulus checks. <laughs> but people that had some sort of business, that's a slap in the face. Okay, maybe you got 2000 Oh, great. More of a slap in the face. When you just lost your 40-year-old business or however long, maybe your one-year-old business, but you really loved your business. And it got closed for no reason. For a regular flu virus, one less than the regular flu virus. So if you're not upset, you should be, and you should know that people are more powerful than the government. And we need to realize that and stop letting these billionaires control our lives. It's easy for them. When they shut down things, they have billions of dollars. When they shut down, for the most of us, we become homeless. We owe two weeks' rent. Luckily, they uh, Trump is saying you can't, you know, evict people. Otherwise, we'd be evicted, you know. But here's the thing: they're all like, "Oh, great, you can't be evicted for three months." When three months ends, people are going to be three months behind, and they're not going to have a job. So then they're going to have all these homeless people in Las Vegas, but then ca here's the catcher. It's illegal to be lo uh, homeless in Las Vegas. Illegal. So once all these people that lost their jobs, because Governor Sislex shut down all the casinos, shut down all the livelihood, they, and then th uh, for a th uh, three months you can't be evicted, but after that three months they're not going to have money to pay, so they're going to be on the streets, and then they're going to be arrested for being homeless. But they probably won't arrest because they won't want to fill up all the jails with just homeless people. So they'll just have a law that then they, didn't, then they don't even enforce. Why have the law then? Just because when it's convenient if you want to arrest a homeless person? That's a horrible law. And then another law they have is that it's illegal to feed pigeons. I violate that law every single day. I don't care. Then come arrest me. I'm feeding the goddamn pigeons. And they also make it legal. You can kill pigeons here. No regard. If they're bothering you, you can just kill them. You can poison them. You can shoot them. But you can't feed them. Can you imagine this place? No wonder why Vegas is getting shut down. Because of the shit people were pulling for a long time here. Between... John Gray and chaos and 
making it illegal to feed pigeons, making it illegal to be homeless, making it illegal to have glass bottles on the strip. I mean, they're just making all these stupid rules, making it just not funny. We're putting cops on every corner on the strip. Ever since Mandalay Bay, they have a cop on every corner. I'm sorry, but when people are partying, that's the last thing they want to see is a cop on every corner. That is not fun for tourists. Even if they're following the law, it's just not fun seeing a cop. So you go, oh, I mean, if they weren't doing something illegal. No, it's just when you're in the middle of having fun, a cop makes you feel like you're doing something illegal even when you're not. You're like, am I doing something illegal? I don't know. It just cops make that feel that way. It's not a fun vibe when there's a cop on every corner. So I am hoping that this... Uh, shutdown resets Vegas and when it comes back it's something better than it was in the sense of not so much greed not so much scamming you know I hope they appreciate the customers and I hope the customers appreciate Vegas I've heard you know I hear from all walks of people and I hear so much crap and I hear good things and bad things but I get so tired of people just shitting on Vegas nonstop coming and just oh, I hate this place and they trash the rooms and they act like it's their toilet and the whole room is their toilet I'm like these are nice rooms you don't need to trash them just cause you're in Vegas just cause you watched the movie Hangover <laughs> it was a movie they didn't really do that. They did it for the movie. But if they had really done that, you actually can go to prison for that. They've actually had people... If they didn't go to prison, they had to pay... There was a guy that trashed a room just recently. He was a um, big... Uh, gam- he was a poker player. And he had to pay like $70,000 or something like that <laughs> to the casino for the damage. Or they were going to arrest him. Um... So, yeah, I mean, over 5000 is you can be arrested. That's prison time if it's in damage. So this, uh, I mean, so it's gone both ways. So there's been the people that have been scamming on the Vegas side where you come here and they rip you off time and time again. But then you also have the tourists that come and expect everything to be free, and they shit on everything. They trash the rooms. They're rude to the staff. You know, and they, I mean, someone still has to clean that room. That's real living human being has to come and clean that room, even though you thought it was, you're going to wipe your ass with the sheets and stuff. You know what I mean? It's just disgusting. I've seen the nastiest things. It's just disgusting the way they leave these rooms. And someone has to come in, and it's usually a woman, it's usually a lady, having to come clean your nastiness. You puked all over and all kinds of gross stuff. Because most of the maids are ladies. And these men are usually the ones doing that. And so, you know, I hope that this is a reset where we reevaluate. Let's appreciate Vegas and let's appreciate the tourists. Let's have a mutual appreciation. And then we can have a nice Vegas again. You know, let's compensate the tourists, not just steal all their money. Let them feel that they had fun, you know, maybe even win once in a while. You know, not be so tight with the gambling. And then, you know, comp a room once in a while. But then the tourists come here and they want comp rooms without gambling. You can't have that. You got to, if you want a comp room, you got to be a gambler. That's how it works. Casino can't just make zero dollars off you. Sorry. They go, I want a comp room, but I don't want to gamble. You got to do one or the other. You got to pay for the room. You got to gamble. They can't. I'm sorry. You can't sit your fat ass in there for free all the time. This just doesn't work. Society can't function on free. That's why this is falling apart. We got the bus going. They're already RTC is having problems now because they made it free. You can't function very long on free. You guys are seeing when you have no money coming in from your business. Don't go too long on free. So when people come and think they can get everything for free and then wonder why they get scammed. Well, you came with the idea that it was going to be free. Or cheap. It ain't cheap. It's Vegas. It's supposed to be where you come and you spend money. And you live lavishly and you tip everyone and you just enjoy yourself and you spend more than you should. And, you know, and that's just it is. Not here. Count my pennies. It's ten cents more. I'm not going to play that game. I lost five dollars. Forget that. So, let's have a... A reset here. I have a new Vegas since we got to start over. As soon as Governor Sislek will allow us to ever open this darn place again. So you guys got to be starting off the trend by taking off the mess, going outside, and stopping the hysteria. You each can do your part by not continuing the hysteria in your own households and with your children. 
if you have children. Your children should know this is not deadly because they have created a lot of fear with the children now where they're going to be scared to hang out with their friends because, oh my gosh, my... So you need to tell your kids that this was a farce, that they are safe to go still socialize. The last thing we need is more isolation from kids. They already isolate enough with video games and they don't hang out with each other and then they get suicidal or they go kill each other at the schools. Because they're not socializing. When kids were interacting more and they say, oh, the bullying is what they're doing. Well, that's because they're not socializing and then they go on social media and they attack each other. But it used to be, if the bullying occurred in school, at least it was better because you worked it out, you know, and then just, even you know, now it's like it don't even occur at school. It's you come on social media and you bully each other. It's all in this isolation thing. All right, guys. Jared, are you out there? I'm going to get off here. Can you just, this is cutting into my, this outfit was starting to cut into my leg. <laughs> All right, I think I'm done. All right, Bear. Thanks, guys.